As healthcare professionals, we know genetic testing for hereditary cancer is more than a simple blood draw. It's a very personal and emotional decision. The results can be life-saving, not just for you, but your family members as well. One out of three people will be diagnosed with some form of cancer over their lifetime. At Beaumont, we'll be your partner in identifying, managing, and potentially reducing the risks of cancer. Genetic testing is one way we can do that. In this video, we'll look at what cancer is, the different categories of cancer, and what you can learn from genetic testing for hereditary cancer. The first step is filling out the questionnaire we sent to you about your personal and family health history. If you haven't already done so, we ask that you be thorough and share as many details as possible. The reason we review this information with you is so we can see how likely it is that your family may have a hereditary form of cancer. We look for certain red flags that could suggest this. Some of the warning signs include the same or related cancer in multiple family members, someone in the family diagnosed with cancer under the age of 50, and certain rare cancers, such as male breast cancer or ovarian cancer. These are just a couple of examples of what we look for in your personal and family history. Your genetic counselor will review your personal and family history with you in detail at your appointment to assess your risk. For individuals who have these red flags in their personal or family history, we can offer genetic testing to determine if this is the case. Before we discuss genetic testing, let's review what a gene is. A gene is essentially an instruction manual. We have about 25,000 genes, and our genes give instructions to tell our bodies how to work and grow properly. For example, some genes tell our bodies how tall to grow or what color our eyes should be. Some genes provide instructions to our bodies to help protect us from developing certain kinds of cancer. For every gene you have, there are two copies. You inherited one from your mother and one from your father. With this testing, we look to see if you've inherited a mutation and a cancer-protecting gene. If you've inherited a mutation in one of these genes, it means you only have one copy of that instruction manual that can correctly tell your body how to protect you from certain kinds of cancer. If only one copy of the gene has a mutation, that's not a problem because you do still have that working copy that can correctly tell your body how to protect you. What happens, or what becomes an issue, is that as we live our lives, we're exposed to things. Our bodies make mistakes and mutations can happen that damage our genes after we're born. If an acquired mutation happens to damage the remaining copy of that gene, that cell can potentially develop into a cancer. This is called hereditary cancer. Only 5 to 10% of individuals with cancer or a family history of cancer fall into this category. If you do have an inherited mutation, knowing where and how high the cancer risks are depend on which gene in your body carries the mutation. Additionally, your family members would be at risk of also carrying an inherited mutation. Parents, siblings, and children would have a 50-50 chance of also inheriting that mutation. Most cancer, however, happens sporadically. For these cases, people have both copies of their genes working properly from the start. Like we mentioned earlier, mutations can still be acquired after we're born, either due to chance, the aging process, or environmental exposures. Sporadic cancer happens after two separate events cause a mutation in both copies of a gene. That's why sporadic cancer typically happens at older ages in life, and we usually do not see a strong family history. It's important to know that if a mutation happens after you're born, you cannot pass it on to your children. Genetic testing will help determine if you inherited a mutation or not. And the importance of identifying if you inherited a genetic mutation that can cause an increased risk of cancer is so you can take action against these risks. If you are found to carry a genetic mutation, high-risk screening and possibly other risk-reducing strategies can be made for you. These strategies would be personalized to you based on your genetic mutation, your personal health history, your family history, and also your comfort level and preferences. Based on the assessment of your personal and family history, genetic testing may be recommended. Testing may entail looking at a single gene or multiple genes associated with hereditary cancer. We will determine at your appointment what testing is most appropriate for you. If you decide to proceed with genetic testing, you will get one of three results. You could get a negative test result, positive test result, or what we call a variant of unknown significance. A negative test result means that no inherited mutations were found in any of the genes that we looked at. 
Depending on your family history, other family members may still qualify for genetic testing. A positive test result means a mutation was found in a gene that should be protecting you from developing cancer. If you're positive, we will have you return to our office to go over your risks and how to manage those risks. We'll also discuss at this appointment what this information means for your family and who may also need testing. It's important to try to determine from which side of the family this mutation was inherited. The important thing to remember is a mutation doesn't mean you have cancer or are guaranteed to get it. A positive result tells us certain cancer risks are higher. Additional measures for prevention and early detection should be taken. These options may include high-risk screening or risk-reducing strategies. The third possible result is a common one called a variant of unknown significance. It means we found something that was different in one of your genes, but we don't have enough evidence to say if it's a problem or not. Everyone's DNA is different, and there's a lot of variation in our genes. Even with this variation, the instructions provided by this gene can still be understood, and the body may still know what to do to fight cancer. Think about it this way. Take the word gray. Whether you spell it with an A or an E, you still know what we're talking about. However, a small percentage of these variants can be damaging. The lab will continue research on any variants of unknown significance, and we would update you with any new information we learn. Until we learn more about this variant, for most people, we don't recommend that you do anything differently in regards to screening and surveillance based on this result. At the end of your consultation, your blood will be drawn at our office. Your blood sample is then sent out to a laboratory that specializes in this type of genetic testing. Results usually take a few weeks to come back. All your information will be kept confidential. There's a law called the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or GINA, which doesn't allow test results to be used against you, especially for employment or health insurance coverage. As for insurance, the labs that we work with can often verify your coverage before testing is started. To make sure you qualify, it is important that we review your personal and family history information. We know this is a lot of information, so please ask us, the genetic counselors, any questions that you may have about this video. A genetic test isn't just a test. It can be life-saving information. Our number one goal is cancer prevention, and if we can't prevent it, we want to detect it as soon as possible to make it more treatable. The possibility of cancer doesn't have to control your life. Together with Beaumont, you can be in control. As your partners in care, our relationship with you doesn't end with the genetic test. Whatever the results may be, we'll always be here for you, ready to provide direction and support whenever you need it.